Welcome to Ben Church, where we believe that every human being is a beloved child of God, and wherever you are on your own journey in faith, you're more than welcome here. You are affirmed and loved. We are a place of grace, so come on in. <laughs> Today, we are in the midst of a worship series we are calling Broadway and Resurrection. If you were here with us in person, you would hear um, some Broadway tunes here and there. Uh, we're having a good time singing some of the ones that you love the most. So um, because of licenses, we can't show them all, but I want to invite you to put on some of your Broadway tunes that you love, if that makes sense for you. Right now, I, I want to invite you really into a spirit of worship, so take a deep breath. Hmm. Let us center ourselves in worship. Radical spirit, thank you for love that is at once comforting and challenging, soothing and demanding. Thank you for showing us when love requires courage and direct action, and when it requires softness and rest. Because our liberation is bound, we must move in many ways. And because we are your friend, we are devoted to your cause, life and life abundantly. May it be so. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from the 10th chapter of Acts, verses 44 to 48. It is from the Common English Bible. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell on everyone who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles. They heard them speaking in other languages and praising God. Peter asked, these people have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. Surely no one can stop them from being baptized with water, can they? He directed that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited Peter to stay for several days. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Uh, okay, so I'm going to try and be short today. We have a lot to do, all right? Uh, but I want to say hello to the people who will be watching this online. So will y'all say hello? Hello. I'm sad that y'all aren't here so to get to hear all of this beautiful music from the Portland Adventist School. But I understand being at home. I understand. So, so anyway, hello, everyone online. I want to start with uh, a quote from Rabbi Abraham Heschel. Our goal should be to live life in radical amazement, to get up in the morning and look at the world in a way that takes nothing for granted. Everything is phenomenal. Everything is incredible. Never treat life casually. To be spiritual is to be amazed. Isn't that good? Yeah. And it has been one of those weeks for us in, in United Methodist land where we are uh, just blessed by the Holy Spirit. And I started um, thinking about what if we thought about our lives as just a cycle of blessings? That we receive a blessing and then we pour out and the blessings just continue to flow like water. Because that's what we are hearing in our lectionary passages today. For those of you who, who are visiting who don't know what that is, we follow the Revised Common Lectionary, which basically keeps pastors honest and we don't preach on the same thing every Sunday. <laughs> so this week we hear from, uh, or in this season really, we go through the Book of Acts and uh, the Gospel of John. 
And that is really, as we think about blessings and water flowing, that's what I'm hearing in our passages today, that the spirit flows as she will. You cannot block it up and keep it for yourself because it just doesn't work that way. In the book of Acts, we keep seeing the apostles constantly amazed <laughs> that every different group of people that they meet, God welcomes into God's family, as, as your song just pointed out. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell on everyone who heard the word. The circumcised believers, y'all know that refers specifically to our Jewish friends. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished. And the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. They heard them speaking in other languages and praising God, and Peter asked, these people have received the Holy Spirit, just as we have. Surely no one can stop them from being baptized with water, can they? So he starts baptizing and stays with these people, and new relationships are formed between folks who were formerly other, not us, not at all acceptable, and us. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? And then the John pericope today from the Gospel of John. Did you see how I moved pericope in there? My little seminary word. Did you get that? <laughs> pericope just means a passage, a short passage from the Bible. I like to throw in a little Greek every once in a while. I like the uh, New Revised Standard Version of this translation best. It's from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, 9 through 17. It says... As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. And you did not choose me, but I choose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Ha! Huh. You see how those passages flow together? The command is to love one another to abide in God's love, to stew in it, to sit a while in that space and feel that joy, to live in it to the best of our ability. And if you start doubting, don't worry, the Holy Spirit is gonna show up when you least expect it and start inviting people to the party that you didn't invite. <laughs> uh and your job will be to welcome them in joyfully, amen? And I know that is always easier said than done, my friends. I know it. But your love has really got to flow like water, and when water doesn't flow, what happens? Ew, right? Rot, disease, mildew. Water that doesn't flow creates opportunities for destructive bacteria to blossom. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So uh, this weekend, uh, I went to Portland. Uh, we're doing some things for my daughter's wedding in July. And I brought my little rain jacket because Portland. Now, y'all that live in Gresham, you don't realize, like, here, we don't get rain that often. Y'all brought it with you. Thank you. Thank you. We need it. But we just don't get it that often. 
uh, we do get snow. And so I had my little jacket and I had been out uh, in the snow and I kind of crumpled it up in a ball and put it away and didn't think about it because we're in bed and things dry really quickly, except when they don't because this jacket I put on when I was in uh, uh, Portland and oh my gosh, the smell, y'all. The mildew had set in. I thought the cat had been there. But that wasn't it. I just, I just had put it away and I'd forgotten that, uh, you know, not everything dries correctly. And it was disgusting and I smelled terrible, but it was raining, I still wore it, y'all. <laughs> In that same way, love, love that doesn't flow, is not open and moving, turns into communities that only care about themselves, that turn inward, that rot, and eventually sink. It feels good. It's good for our spirits to give love to other people. And if there are those who are left out, I'm looking at you guys in the booth. Does it feel pain not to get any love? No. <laughs> Introverts in the booth. And they're like, no, thank you for not, not coming over here and making me do something. No. We can think about love as a currency, a holy currency that must move and change to be healthy in much the same way that, that money has to move to create a healthy economy. In, um, in this fabulous book by Eric Law called Holy Currencies, he talks about that financial crisis, which was probably before y'all were born. I don't know, I can't do math. Uh, it was in 2009. Is that a year you guys were born? All right. So, so the same amount of money was in existence. Where did all that money go? Well, some people in the financial industry had been reaping benefits from inflated financial tra transactions for years. But instead of recirculating the money back into the system, especially back to investors, they hoarded it. They stopped the flow of money and then it turned rotten and stank up our whole country. <laughs> Amen, you remember? Yeah, I lost a lot of money, it's fine. It's totally fine. Jesus says, abide in my love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. So as people committed to justice and joy, may we use our very lives to keep love moving in all of our relationships and money moving to support one another in our communities, amen? I end where I started. Our goal should be to live life in radical amazement, to get up in the morning and look at the world in a way that takes nothing for granted, Everything is phenomenal. Everything is incredible. Never treat life casually because to be spiritual is to be amazed. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all, amen. Well, I hope that word was good for your spirit or your heart or your mind, wherever um, you are feeling led. As our response, we um, give back to this community. An activist philosopher, Angela Davis, famously says, you have to act as if it were possible to radically change the world. And you have to do it all the time. <laughs> We gather our offerings today online, acting out transformation, living out hope, and placing our resources and actions on the altar of a better world. So if you believe in the work of Ben Church, I invite you to give joyously and generously. There are a number of ways to give online. You can do through, so through the QR code you're gonna see here, which gives you access to our online database. You can also text GIVE, G-I-V-E, to the number right here on your screen. 
And you can also mail a check to uh, the church if you so feel moved. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for all that will be given this week to the work of this amazing congregation with this building in downtown Bend. May what we give be a blessing to not only the people in this room, but to everyone who seeks life and seeks it abundantly here in Central Oregon. And all the people said, Amen! Let it be so. Go forth knowing that you are beloved, that you are called, and that you are the one who can make change in this world, even if it is just within yourself. So make change for the good. Amen.